$100,000 is what this thing is being uh, offered for sale right now on Facebook Marketplace. I'm gonna check it out, see if it's not gonna be the new family hauler. And let me just read a couple of things and I'll just start off by saying the pictures that are on the ad are, are not exactly what, what I find here right now. Uh, the airplane is currently not airworthy. Correct. The cylinders will need to be replaced and it needs an annual. The last annual was conducted in 2022, which would be one year ago, probably a, a few minutes before that. But here's, here's kind of the why I'm here. And I drove a very long way to be here. It is new interior panels in 2015, new paint with accents on it in 2015, and the avionics in it are pretty good. The engines, our Ram 4 conversions, which are super nice, only 571 hours on the engines, and the airplane only has 4,700 hours. So, my best guess is if this airplane was in really good flying, nice condition and made up, this thing would be worth somewhere around $200,000 to $250,000. So you think about $100,000, you're like, but there's some room to wiggle but it, it goes really fast in airplane world. Let's, let's take a look around and see what we got. Right away, uh, lots, of, lot, lots of paint issues everywhere. Uh, yeah, we got, that was open, which is great. So critters probably got in there. The, uh, these are the, the blow up to get ice, de-ice boots. And there's lots of patches on this already. And one way to tell of the condition of the rubber is just take your finger. Yep. Yep. Those are toast. Well, yeah, they're toast. All right. So right off the bat, you're looking at de-ice boots all the way around. You just figure an even $15,000 on the low end, probably closer to 20,000 bucks. Looking here at the propeller, it looks like they use this to grind up sand. Uh, it's just completely toast on the backside too, which is kind of odd. The boots on here, those don't look too bad. Uh, does it turn? Oh yeah, 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 she turns. Prop, gonna have to get both of those checked and bench checked, so probably looking at anywhere between five to $10,000 for both of them. So how much are we at to now? 30,000 bucks and we haven't even made it to the nose of the thing. Looking around, we see brakes down here. Oh yeah. Mm, okay, actually the brakes, the struts are collapsed. So we're gonna need service on the struts, maybe rebuild, not the end of the world. Tires, you figure thousand bucks for the tires. And then I'm looking up in here for birds nests or anything else that like to, to climb in. Rust here and there and everywhere. All right, I mean, honestly, it's, it's rough. There's no doubt about that, but Let's check out the paint, paint condition. Same same kind of thing as the rubber. Let's see that one, we'll, we'll use that one. Yeah, it comes off a little bit white. Is it savable? I have no idea until it gets a really good washing. All right, standard strobes, that stuff is still there. The story with the whole airplane and why it's been sitting here and the whole deal with it is Here's the best guess that I can figure. The guy bought the airplane somewhere back in the early to mid 2000s, say 2005 to 2008, something like that. And then he bought it for his business and to fly it around. And he had a guy fly him and, you know, being all rock star like. All right, clean. Any major rust, that's a good sign. We have our alcohol pump, that's what this is. We have this right here, that's where you put your isopropyl alcohol. Yeah, it's definitely dry, and been dry for quite some time. Three gallons of isopropyl alcohol, and you use that as part of your de-icing, so you have tubes on the windshields, and you just hit the this thing, and it pumps it up and squirts it all over the windshield to make the ice melt, so that's how that works. All the black boots on it, they inflate when ice gets on there to take the ice and break it off of it, and the same on the propeller, it's for heating it right there and stuff, so. Well, anyways, this airplane, 
the story was that he got it to get flown around, possibly charter out, that kind of a thing. Well, you know, life happens sometimes. And then he ended up finding a partner to help take care of it while he was the money guy. And then some sort of personal life stuff took place. And then in the last annual, they were having a new avionics thing put in it. And somehow or another, the uh, flaps got stuck in the first notch down of here that's as far as they went they never bothered to really dig into it and find out what happened the other thing the reason he says that it's uh the cylinders are all bad he said that three of the cylinders on each engine so six total tested bad they tested low when he checked it with a compression test now here's a caveat to that these are continentals which always test low and they have a very specific way to test the compression and we don't even know if it was done because the mechanic guy that was doing the work on it, he, he was no longer really taking care of the airplane or getting paid to do the work on it because the owner was like, ah, just hold off a little bit. So I think there was some, some stuff about, eh, let's just keep the airplane, you know, keep it just sitting over there. It's not doing anything, uh, not flying it. So I don't actually know if these cylinders are bad or not, or if they just did a quick test on them and said, yep, they're bad, and they never went through the actual full process to test the compression on this. That's what we're gonna find out today. Because if, let's just do some quick math. We buy it for $100,000. This airplane will sell for 200 to $250,000, probably closer to 250 with the hours and the engines and avionics it's got on it. Even if we have to put $50,000 into it, 150 grand for a $250,000 airplane, that's how to do it. And the asterisk also is, if we have to put new cylinders on this thing and change all those out, each cylinder, just call it $2,500. So there's five, there's 75, there's 15 we're just there's probably gonna be other things we run into twenty thousand dollars just an engine stuff on this thing and that could quickly just blow like the whole budget of the whole deal so i did see the stc paperwork for these scoops down here these fiberglass coolers that are inside so that's pretty cool i don't see any birds in here but i also don't see any plugs that that would stop birds i see bird poop but no bird nests okay Hmm. I wonder if that was corrosion and or it was just paint that was flaked off like this and they just threw some paint on it to try to protect it or something. There's a stick. Okay. This thing is, oh, <laughs> it needs a lot of work. Does this have the same landing lights that the 310 does? Because I see this. Yeah, I think these are the lights that fold down. They go, Woo! yeah, it's got lots of stuff growing on it. Before we got over here, we had the, the guy put in a battery that's got some juice to it. What happened here was when he opened this door, a bunch of yellow fluid was in the door and poured out all over that. I'm not sure what that was, but we do know that we actually have keys that work. Let's take a look inside the old girl here. Oh, oh, okay, that woof. And the smell, it's musty. That's a good word for it. Yes. So nasty. Just the rust that's on this thing and all these parts. Look at that. Yeah, so uh, that was where the water was. It was in there, right there. It was all in there. That's all soaking wet. I don't want to touch it. Gross. A whole bunch of corrosion right here. Wow. That is my number one fear is corrosion because that's the stuff that's very, very difficult to cure. Oh, oh, that is just pure <coughs> mold. <coughs> yes. Oh yeah, look right here. Oh man. Oh, that's a great idea. And you have a cigar, which somebody has clearly used. Emergency, we're not gonna open that because it may not close back. The one question I have, where are the rest of the seats? Is there, they're not back there. I hope it's got more seats somewhere. Wait, we got a thing down here. Okay, it's locked apparently. There we goes. Oh, there's nothing in it. Anticlimatic, isn't it? Oh, I think this is uh, one that has a, a bucket toilet. And you have your CD player here. That's kind of cool table for the other side there is a hobs heater i'm assuming that's for the heater there's a hobs timer right here i think that is probably for the heater 
Oh, we gotta take all the pins off to get that door off to look in the back. But I think this, oh, there's little electric heaters. <laughs> this has got a crazy amount of corrosion right there, actually. Oh yeah, it's actually a flushing one. Dude, that's fancy. Ready? We gotta go turn the power on, see if that works. Seat not to be occupied during takeoff and landing. Oh, you have a privacy curtain? You know, you're sitting here doing your business. You don't have to make eye contact. Excuse me. Okay, we're good. How would you? The door's not gonna be open. How do you get off of this thing if you're flying? You just tuck and roll, I guess. what we got up here. All right, first impressions. The seats are really nice. Oh man, I feel like I'm sitting way out. Okay, oh, well, that's good. Okay, control flight, that feels pretty good. Pull back, that feels all right. That is stiff, that's supposed to just go boom right back. That's stiff. Autopilots, woo! Everything in here is just corroded. Look at the switches right there. When I see this on the little stuff, this is what I see, and I can only imagine what I can't see is more. Engine off. Okay, so it's just like Cessna, right and left, main, main auxiliary. Okay, cross feed. Okay, all right. Master on. Let's see what it turns on. Wait, we got fuel pumps going. Something. Where's the fuel pump? Auxiliary pumps. Something was turned on. Cabin fan off. Oh, they've got circuit breakers pulled and everything. The transfer pump, fuel pumps, lights. What is that noise? All right, listen, where's fuel pressure on this? Fuel quantity, oil, cylinder, EGT. Fuel pounds per hour. Oh, it shows it's got a lot of fuel in it. How accurate that is, I don't know. What the heck is that pump noise? That sounds like it's coming from up there. AC fan off gear. Does it all right? We got three green. Yep, three green. Right there. Man, I really don't like that sound. I'm gonna find out what the heck that is. It's not fuel pumps. Cabin, landing light cabin. Radar, it's got radar on it. Oh, that's what that thing is, isn't it? That's cool. It's our volts at, volts, 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 volts. Let's see, oxygen, it's got a little bit of oxygen left in it. That's the differential right there for the pressurization system. Cylinder, cylinder, EGT, outside. Mine, the volts was is right down here. And I see amps over here, but there's no voltmeter. Hmm. <gasps> Cup holder. <laughs> it's just like the ones in the uh, Jetstar and Elvis's plane that were up here, except these are down here. All right, I have no idea what that thing is. Oh wait, alternator and volts, here we go. Boom, shows 25. Ah, okay. Fuel transfer in off, she says. Alternator door warning, we get that. All those light up, that's good. Low volt flash. Oh, and I noticed here, these are regular general aviation plugs, and then you got real fancy ones up here that are powered. Uh, I forget what they're called, but uh, a lot of the big airplanes and jets use that style of plug for your headset. That's pretty cool. Pitch, sync, that's your community. You, you think there'd be a autopilot off switch, unless that's what it is right there. Okay, 
Uh, let's turn the avionics on. Any, mini, mini, mo, right there. Okay, and, oh, there we go. Okay, that's powering up, that's powering up. They were putting this thing right here in, is my understanding, and that's when something in here got messed up with the flat motor. Either it got disconnected behind here, or they shorted something, or something somewhere got messed up. So this is the MX-20 moving map. This is a Garmin 530 for your uh, navigation GPS. Is that okay? I have no idea if this radar still works or not. Okay, let's uh, let's go check the engines out before we start pushing buttons to see how the engines are, and uh, we're gonna see if we can't fire them up and get them started. But we gotta check some things out there first. Hmm, I just saw this. I don't like that. Hmm. Oh yes, not a fan of whatever that is. Tricks from in there, just running in there, leaking from this window right here, it looks like. Oh, yeah, that window was definitely leaking. And then water dripping down in there. It's there. I'm guessing looks like it was running down there. Oh, man, alive. And first glance the engine looks fairly clean oil cooler right there oh there's no date on the oil filter smells like old fuel in there ah let's see what sort of leaks we've got this right here was a massive massive issue on these airplanes where this exhaust clamps okay all right yeah we just pop the top off this thing the uh the btus on this bad boy are supposed to be what is it like? It's 315 horse, I believe, on each side, which is pretty good. Pressurized cabin, so you can fly all the way up just below the Boeing 747s in Southwest and get above a lot of the weather, smoother flight, and still only have a mild headache whenever you land after a few hours. Okay, air filter is still in there and there's no bird. That, that's a good sign. So far, the engines are looking all right. Oh man, look at that one. Seriously, that's just got Seattle written all over it. Some more of these things falling out. Oh, the big reveal. Is there how much stuff is on the bottom of this? Oh wow, that's a lot cleaner than I thought it was. Let's see what we're dealing with here, boys and girls. The Continental IO520, forget what model number. It'll have a data plate right here you go. Hey, I was wrong on the uh, horsepower, 325. And it's a TSIO turbo, 120 cubic inches out of a six cylinder, massive EBNB. Oh, this is the amount of dust that's on this thing. Okay, all right. Magneto's here, filter there, okay, so far it's, it's fairly clean. I'm going to attempt <laughs> to see if I can stick my hand in that turbo and see if, good lord, how do you even get to the latch under this thing? the air filter right here. Looks like a small block Chevy. Oh, there you go. Oh, turbo looks pretty good. Go in and spin it. Oh, yeah. Oh, those are, those are nice and 
tight. Wow. It looks really good, but they are. We're gonna have to hit it with some of this right here. Let it sit for a few minutes. Now we also have to keep into consideration, this is flammable and I just stuck it in the exhaust. So if this thing starts up and that's still going, I have a mild fire on our hands, but you know, that's, that's fine. All right, let's give the old Jimmy shoulder compression check. All right, there's a little bit on that one. Okay. Absolutely nothing on that one. Or that one. I think I gained speed with that one. Or that one. Or that one. Or that. You gotta be kidding. There's one right here. The rest of these. <laughs> That's really not good. Oh, here's something really not good either. Look at this. I'm gonna wiggle this blade so these props for sure have not been greased. I'd say these props are toast too. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is a good one here. That is just crazy. Look at this. Can you see how far this is moving? That's, uh, that's... Okay, well, let's just pull some plugs and check the oil. Why not? I already know that prop is definitely gonna have to get sent off. Turbo, maybe, and we definitely have some zero compression cylinders. Now, with Lycoming, there's a special little thing with the engine. Could have some carbon buildup and they just need flushed, and they might actually come back to life. We'll find out here in a minute. A blue or an orange fins, which would tell me if it was chromed or nickel or what sort of cylinder it would be. And on the base, I'm not seeing that either. Now in the log books, there is a statement that it was in annual in 2022, which was only a year ago. There's no way on earth this thing could dilapidate that bad in one year. I'm sorry, I gotta say a big no on that. Let's see what you're dealing with. Golly. Okay, first spark plug is rusted to bits. Oh, that's bad. I mean, he did say that cylinders were gonna need to be replaced. Bad. And what scares me is the rust that's out here, not a little bit of corrosion there. 100,000 bucks. Then we add in the props, which these to get rebuilt are about 8,000 bucks. So there's 16,000. Then we look at paint issues on it. We're looking at another, call it 5,000 bucks for paint touch up. Where are we at? 21,000. Then a regular annual on this plane on a good day is 10 grand. So that's. 31 and then we look at two turbos worst case scenario that's six grand a piece so that's another 12 so that's 31 plus 12 is 43 and then you add up the cost of cylinders 2500 bucks a piece and there's 12 of them i have no idea what that math is it's like this much it's a lot and then some corrosion issues that we've clearly already seen so that one hey there's that's what I was hoping the plugs would look like. That one doesn't look too terribly bad. Whew. I mean, then that's not including, so it needs tires. There's two grand. Then you look at the struts to rebuild all those things. And remind yourself, I was doing the work under the supervision of an IA, so there's a massive discount in labor there. So we're looking, let me see, we're at 40, so that's, 50, 60. We're looking at another $100,000 you're gonna spend on this airplane just to get it back into nice airworthy condition. So right away, you're 200 grand into a $250,000 airplane, and that's if there's no big gotchas in there. All right, let's check the oil, see what we got. Oh, hey, that's a good sign. Oil is nice. Oh yeah, that oils. Oh, God, my nose. Oh, it's in my mustache now. That's aero shell. <laughs> That's what that is. Oil look good. Let's pull these other plugs over there and then let's see if the starter works and roll this thing over, see if we can get some oil pressure. Oh, my Lanta. Look, corrosion. And I haven't even pulled the spark plug out of there yet. Man, That's too bad. This is a very, very nice airplane. Was a very, very nice airplane. 
Alright, we got the right fuel line right here. The brown stuff. Uh, it should be type D hose, which is a lifetime hose. That's a good sign. Got more of it back here. That's all very good. Okay, that, that one's not too bad. I mean, it's not good. Hey, look. This is a hybrid. It's electric. Plug that in your extension cord. <laughs> that is not a joke. Look at that. It is just full. <gasps> in all the airplanes that I've done, I've never seen spark plugs like this. Okay, so here, look at this. You have to get detailed, but you see the space on this side? See the space on this side versus that side? That's not good. So this one's too tight, that one's too big. So we're gonna have to open that one up a little bit so it matches that side. Okay, here's the first try to see if the starter works. Now ironically on a Cessna, these are the main tanks and this is the auxiliary tank. Oh yeah, that's, that's gonna be filled with water. Is that this one? Oh, holy good. <gasps> That's blue. That is ab gas. Well, that's a miracle. There's miracle number one. I mean, I'll take it. This right here is your stall horn. So if your wings get going back too much, you don't have enough wind that goes over it. It goes, boom, and it goes, and then the light goes off, and it goes, inside there. And you're like, oh, no. And you got to put the nose over so you don't crash and die, basically, is what that is. Let's put spark plugs back in it and see if there's any life in this thing at all the way it is before we go in and do some major surgery on it. There's gold in them there, spark plugs. That is all rust. You know what? Before we put these spark plugs in, let's get our bore scope and let's just see how bad it is. All right, let's just start with this one back here. So that's the exhaust valve, and we want to see a nice circle on it, which we got. That's the intake valve right there, and that is all just corrosion all over the top of that. Here, we need to rotate the propeller down. Oh, it's got a nice cross section in it. Here, come here, look at this. That's what you want to see. See that little X right there? See all those X's? Oh, that's really good. All oh, that little looks like sand in there. That's corrosion. That is supposed to be the exhaust seat, which is supposed to be nice and smooth. The seat, the exhaust seats are rusted like crazy. These cylinders are toast. Because you'd have to, I don't even know if lapping those, I don't know if this one's going to start it, I'm honest with you. I have no idea. All right, Silas, so it's starting to get dark out here. So we need to check the lights. I don't know if any of the lights come on. And we we'll also need to check the fuel pump, so... Yeah, it's on. And it's hot. Oh, good. On the outside of the engine. Go ahead. It's not on. I see it, though. What about the tax line up front? It's on. It's off now? It's off now. All right, our nav lights? This side's off. We didn't check the beacons. Yeah, I've had them on. Oh, the beacons are off. Yeah. Still off. Are there any fuel leaking? I don't see any. Check it out. So when I flip the switches, nothing happens. But now when they're both off in the middle, and if I push that in, but I'm not seeing it on the fuel flow right there. So watch, and the other one does it too. Huh, that's not good. We've got some wiring issues. Oh look, more rust. Conducting. That's a sign of Jimmy style. <laughs> <laughs> huh, I am not getting any fuel flow up here whatsoever. Well, you know what to do. We're going to see if we can't fire that up, even though we have no fuel pressure and we have no idea if there's any spark. So throw in the comments, how many tries do you think it's going to be for this left engine? Once we kill the battery or we just give up and we'll go over to the right engine. Put it in the comments. It's rolling downhill and I can't stop it. Our vein will stop it though. I don't know whether or not to use this for a tie down. Which is really what it's for. I guess just throw it in front of that wheel. 
All right, we got Jimmy Vision. Silas, you ready? Get shot over there. Oh, the smell in here is something fierce. Okay, let's see. All right. Master's on. Mags are on. Fuel pump on. Okay, here goes start number one. Okay, clear prop. Start number two, can I get a clear prop? This thing ain't even trying. There is nothing there. I don't think there's any fuel getting to it. We have our fuel turned on here. Left main, 50 gallon. Check, we got fuel in there. Full rich mixture, all generations below and switching tanks. Yeah, okay, operate and main tanks. Okay, and then switch, okay, got it. Auxiliary fuel pump systems have been modified by service bulletin so-and-so. Low for takeoff, landing, and vapor clearing. Low, high for engine-driven fuel pump failure. Very low or no fuel pressure. Yeah, with auxiliary fuel pumps low, okay. Mags are on, fuel pump is on. That's a prime, I'm not hearing that thing kick on. The other side you do. Yeah, I'm not hearing anything. Clear prop! Suction. I mean, it's moving a little bit when I do that. Ha! Huh. Yep, this thing ain't getting any fuel. It's not getting anything. Oh, good lord. Well, okay. We may need to see if we can get that other side started first to be able to charge this battery. And I'm afraid this battery is just going to go crap on us and go dead before we can get it started. So let's just take a look at the other engine just real quick. Check the oil. Oh, yeah. Clean oil. Primer pump as well on this side, so I think I'm just gonna cross feed it now because I gotta have the fuel pump over there. Nothing! Let's check down there the auxiliary tank. It's got a little bit of something in there, and it's fuel. That's good. Oh, good luck on this one, boys. All right, right engine time. Mags are hot. Nothing. Okay. At least we have pressure here now. There we go. That's good. Okay, crack, start that and then start the pump. And I get a clear bro. Come on, girl. Oil pressure is coming alive. Oil pressure right here is coming alive. Fuel pressure's up. I'm gonna pull the pump and see if it stays on the engine. There it goes. Keep the RPM down a little bit. Oh no! Did it run out of gas? Clip up! was me not touching it. The you know, oil pressure's holding good. There we go. All right, now the fuel pressure's coming up. Those are on. That's up. That's up. Can I get a clear prop? Come on, girl. Come on. Take a light. Oh, oh, it's coughing. Come on. Come on. It wants it. It wants it. Apparently, it doesn't like the main I get no fuel flow out of the auxiliary or the main but then I go over to the auxiliary and we get fuel flow out of it. All right, can I get a clear prop? Fuel pump on. You need three hands to do this. Come on. I'm getting fuel flow. That's good. 
nothing else. Alright, we'll have to let it sit for a minute. It's starting to get temperature and everything, that's good. Outside air temperature is not working either. I don't think the amps thing is hooked up. Mags are on. We'll leave the heater off. That's our prime that's not working. I'm not hearing it click or the motor move or anything. Our fuel below. Push that on. That should come up. It does. Then we get a clear wrap. Oh, we got a backfire. That's not good. Let's see if it's too lean. That's what it is. I flooded the thing out. I think I flooded it. That's the problem. This is a project and a half right here. It's a really nice project, but a project nonetheless. Yeah, I think I flooded it. Oh, wow. Good night. Oh, there's crap blowing everywhere. That was a really bad idea. I got it in my mouth. Oh, that was awful. Don't do that. Percy lights on. Ding. I don't know what any of these switches do. That might be the GPSS for the autopilot to go from this so that it works with that. All right, let's go ahead and try to start that thing again. Canada, clear prop. Man, it backfires each time. Okay, I don't like that. So I'm gonna stop. This one did not like whatever I was trying to do to it. It was pop, pow, boom, bang, crash, bang. That one apparently I just, I should have just not touched it and just went in and tried to start it because it clearly worked better than me touching it. Oh, you know, I never did test the propeller to feather on that. No fear. Well, here's the long and short of it. This thing's gonna take $100,000 to get it into nice condition to get everything back done and probably about a year of just working on this airplane and nothing else. I don't have the patience for that, so I'm gonna keep looking. If you know of a nice cabin class, like a 421, a 414, something that we can take the family on, because I think it would be great to start planning a Jimmy's World Tour. Maybe we can do that after the Elvis Jet Tour in 2024, maybe in 2025 doing around the world Jimmy's World Tour. What do you think? What would be the best airplane for that trip? Something with some legs, has to have a bathroom on board, got family, and something that we can fly all the way around the world. I think that would be a pretty cool goal to set. So let's start looking for that airplane. It's not gonna be this one. Keep sending me all those, you know, my email address, all that down there, whatever. Honestly, I think this airplane definitely could be saved. It would take somebody a solid year of working on it. You're gonna have to redo all the cylinders, probably take the turbos apart, at least get them freed up and cleaned up. And who knows what you're gonna find with the airframe after you wash it and clean it. So that's a project for somebody else. I've got too many on the plate already. Let's get the Elvis jet on the road. Well, that one didn't work out, but look what we spied sitting just behind it. That right there. We gotta check this thing out. It's a big old honking DC-3. How cool is that? <gasps> Come on, check that out. How cool is this thing? Metal, fabric. How neat is that? I wonder if this was an, a real war plane or if it was what it was. The big door there, padlocked to keep all the riffraff out. Patton's Ace in the Hole is the name of this plane, or currently it is. You may remember Gino from Oshkosh has his DC-3 that's on a semi-truck chassis. That's like Elvis Jet Part 1, and we're going to be RV Airplane Part 2 with the Elvis Jet. I can't wait to see how that goes. The window's open. That's probably not good. How cool would that be to get like this thing? And... <laughs> well, here at the hotel, and Silas being Silas, found something that is a little concerning under here. Let's see if I can show you. Under the sink on the back of the panel is this thing. What the heck is that? And it's got a power button on it. That is really concerning. I think. What the heck is this thing? We don't have any idea what this is. It flashes when you push the little red button like that. And then you do it again and it just like turns on or something, we guess. I don't know. So we're gonna go down to the desk and ask them if they have any idea what this is. 
inside your room and if you press it the well then that thing should have been going off because we've been pushing this thing like crazy <laughs> okay then it's going to our bosses oh good not that this is not a panic button there's a button in your room i believe that sends a signal to our manager okay. if anything happens is that this thing yes so that's that's the, si that's the signal thing that goes to death and there's a button inside your room like if someone elderly falls down or something and needs to press that button and then one of our managers would get it then it, did it fall off? No, no, he was, he was being I'll see that way you got, I'll see that way you guys were clicking. <laughs> yeah, it, it was like in a wall? Yeah, it was in the front of the sink. This is the panel off of the front of the sink and it's hidden up behind me. Like that. Yeah, that's just for security. We all have them up back there as well. We put panic buttons in the hotel specific because if someone falls down or something happens, it goes off and then that sends to the manager and then they call what room? Because I believe, is that yeah. your remember? Yeah. yeah, that's definitely a perk for me. All right, thank you. Bye. Bye. I don't believe him for one flipping second. And this thing ain't staying in my room. Just saying. Washington State. Starting in January 2020, state law mandates panic buttons for hotels with 60 plus rooms. So apparently, there's these like panic buttons that these the staff wear, and if something goes wrong, they hit that button, and then it geolocates them to wherever they're closest to, and that way they that receiver thing is what tells the main the computer system or whatever wherever that panic button was pushed. I don't care. I still don't want that thing in here spying on me. I don't like it. That's crazy. We have a special treat for you because we're getting ready to fly in the world's fastest piston twin airplane. Ooh, that's a beauty, eh, Clark? How you doing, buddy? You got uh, the main job of camera stuff, don't pretty you? Pretty much. That's yeah, it. He's a camera guy. He's on salary. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Called rent and groceries and yeah. clothes. Oh, cool. That, that's, that's a good salary, you know? <laughs> it it costs money. Oh, that's fantastic. This is the Aerostar. It's the world's fastest piston twin airplane there is. She goes about 300 miles an hour. Uh, there's different versions and varieties, and uh, this guy was so nice of us. He is going to take us up and show us what she's got. And the man, the myth, the legend, uh, Eric Reese is the owner of this pilot. Hey, Jimmy. Nice owner to of see. this pilot, this airplane. I'm He's the, the pilot. No, my wife is the owner of the pilot. Fair, yeah, that's fair. That's, that's fair. If you're married, you know that. <laughs> uh, so this is Eric Reese. Uh, he has another YouTube channel. I think it's just called Eric Reese. You can something. get it that way, but if you... Google uh, YouTube or uh, Aerostar Pilot. That's what Middle, it is. The Aerostar Aero, Pilot. Aerostar Aero Pilot. So we've been chatting back and forth. It's no secret. Ever since I learned about the Aerostar, number one on my list of airplanes to find. And I kick myself for two of them that mm -hmm. I passed on. I passed on a Machin 680 yeah. for 85 grand. And it was, I think, one year out of annual. And it had the avionics were in it. The guy spent a bunch of money on it. And he was just like unloading it because he wasn't a pilot himself and was offloading it. And then I kicked myself again for the one that you sent me that was, I think, just 100 grand or 110 or something like mm -hmm. that. And it was already flying in an annual and everything. And it was a good airplane, a good solid airplane. And I still kicked myself for that. And it's because of all the other projects I've got going on. Yes. How many of those do you have? <laughs> so, a little bit about the uh, Aerostar here. <laughs> Man, well, and what you don't know is your dad was one of the key guys in the development and making this airplane. Right. Is that correct? That's correct. So, what? Well, first off, walk us walk us around the plane. Okay. And love to know more about 
your dad's role in the development, the creation of this airplane. Okay. So yeah, so it's like, show us, I mean, it's a beautiful airplane, by the way. It is, it's not something that I would be flying, way too nice for that. But no, you need to be flying one of these. Oh, I agree. Then you can get to all these places a lot faster than an <laughs> that's, RV. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably with a lot less issues as well. Oh, man. So what do we got here? What are we looking at? So this is, um, this was manufactured by Piper. So there's a history behind, oh, behind right. that whole thing because of Ted Smith and then selling it and then buying it back and then Piper buying it. And then Piper was the last company to actually own it. So this is the last 602P off of Piper's line. The last one period, period. ever. Ever. Now wow. there were 25 additional Aerostar 700Ps, and that's different from the mock and converted 700s, but 700Ps that, that um, Piper made, and I think there's about 15 to 17 of those still flying. Two of them are with us over in Europe uh, a couple of weeks ago, which is kind of cool. And this one um, has been converted by Aerostar Aircraft, also known as Mach, and they're two separate companies, but Mach does all the mods. It's got TIO 540U2A engines, which are 350 horsepower dual turbos. Twin yeah. Turbski. Oh, by turbskis. the way, that's why I wore this shirt. Yay! There's the <laughs> on it. Oh, those turbos. They really like to pump things up. So that's the 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 engine deal and then there's some other things this also has a uh the turbos especially the big turbos that pump stuff up you know like arnold does you know pump yeah whatever yeah pump the cabin up so it's got a oh, higher yeah because this is pressurized this is pressurized and a lot of people you know they don't know they think well how does an airplane get pressurized so you have to carry oxygen tanks in walk, here? walk us over here so these these are so what you did if i understand this right you took the fastest airplane, yeah. and then you took it to some guys and said, let's make it faster. Faster, it's safer. Not necessarily faster, because yes, the additional horsepower does get, get you some more speed, but that's not the key thing. It was about safety and weight. So if you take mm. the original engines at 290 horsepower and then pump them up to 350, you have a lot more margin on takeoff. So if you lose an engine, it actually climbs better. Um, This is what edits are for. <laughs> <laughs> That's staying in. Okay. So, okay, what do they right. do? Whenever you went and you said, here's a huge pile of cash, yep. let's do that. So they replaced the entire engine, right? Yeah, this is this The is entire not engine the... is different. Right. right. Okay. It's not the stock engine. Basically the same basic engine, but it's just a different model. Okay. And it's the newest one, and there's a whole story behind that and, uh, and how that all happened with Lycoming. And Lycoming didn't like that. Machen was competing with them and modifying their engines, so they came up with the U-2A. Gotcha. And, uh, so they, so the, the idea is, one, the engines, they can either be modified on the original ones or the new engine, additional pressurization. So instead of a four point... Now we're two, gonna put our nerd glasses Yeah, we're gonna put on. the nerd stuff All on. Right, so so we got a 4.25 pounds per square inch cabin. That means the cabin's pressurized up to 4.2 PSI, which gives you about a 11,000 foot cabin at 25,000 feet. So if you're 25,000 feet up, the cabin feels like it's at 11. Which is still really high. It's still high. Now this one, because of that additional pressure, at 25,000 feet, my cabin's only 8,400. Which is fantastic. And most of these big airliners, like the, these 787s sitting behind us, are about eight or nine PSI. Mm -hmm. So the cabin's gonna be six to 7,000 feet. So it's really not that much different than an airline. Although they're up at 40,000 and we can, this airplane's certified to 30. That's so just crazy. Yeah. Go to 30, it's certified to 30, which means realistically you can probably take it you up higher could, than that. I you mean, you wanna have oxygen or stuff. Yeah, on at 30 we're gonna be at 11, 11 almost 12,000 feet in the cabin. Um, but what it does is it just makes a ride more comfortable. You don't have to wear oxygen masks. And, you know, if you've got a family and a bunch of little kids, you know, keeping the oxygen masks on is sometimes tough. But there's a story behind that that's really cool. You might, maybe you did this one time. 
And that is that when the kids get really kind of rambunctious. <laughs> I know where he's going. And, and, and with our 210, that was our, our station wagon. I got three of them. And they'd get all kind of going crazy. And I'd just say, well, I'll just climb up 14,000 feet. They wouldn't go to sleep. They would just sit there with their eyes wide open, just looking around. It's but it oxygen was quiet. deprivation, and it's fantastic. <laughs> it works. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's a funny story. I did that on our uh, the Cherokee Six. Silas, this is you're learning this for the first time. Don't let Evie see this video. But I went up to twelve thousand, and I'm like, well, we got to, you know, give us enough margin to get over the hills in Tennessee. And you know, they're at like six. Yeah, so hundred like, feet. You mean? <laughs> yeah. And I was like. We're going to go up to 12,000 and magically Noah chilled out. Yeah. And we're like, all right, perfect. But then, of course, you know, as the pilot, you're like, okay, this is not fun anymore. So then we kind of come back down and cruise at about 95. And that's kind of the sweet spot to keep them still a little calmer and stuff like that. And then you turn the heater on a little bit. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's really good. That's so, funny. Babysitting uh, airplane stuff 101. So this airplane yeah. is... Now, Aerostar has a bunch of different marketing names. This one is technically a 702P, minus the King. This is getting into the nerdy stuff again. Okay. The King 225 autopilot. Right. So that's the only thing this doesn't have to make it a 702P. Um, this would be, otherwise, this would be a Super 700. So they got a bunch of names that really kind of get confusing. Yes. And, and there's a great book out there that explains all that stuff. And it's uh, command, Commanders? Stars like, and Commanders. Stars and Commanders. Yeah, it's and I know. fantastic book. I saw one of your videos, and you had that prominently placed right back here on your shelf so you yeah. can see it. But that, that is the end-all everything uh, for knowledge about these airplanes. Well, that book was put together with the help of you, your dad, and Not the, much with me, but my dad, yes. And the son of Ted Smith, right? Ron Smith was involved in that, yeah. yep. And... Uh, who Ted Smith was the original brainchild of this this airplane. All right, yeah, walk okay. us around, and then your dad. So, so hit us, let's walk around and kind of walk So let's talk, look show. at, um, this is where all the air comes in. Yeah. But not all the, that, and that goes in and cools off the, the hot air coming out of the turbochargers. Yeah. And uh, let's see, it's got these black things on the leading edge of the wing. Those are called de-ice boots, and what they do is they inflate a little bit, and they're like ribs, and if it, we get into icing conditions, it'll break the ice off. So I'm going to do a test. Okay. This, what we did on the 414, which you guys just saw a couple seconds ago, clean finger. Still a clean finger. That's what you want to see on a boot, not where your finger turns black, black. and cold. No, that, that would not, not be good. That is not a good thing. That's oxidation and yeah. not good. No. And the ones on the propellers, yep. you, you'll see a lot of these black things on there. And those are heated. They're hot. So they're electric and they, they warm up and sling the, keep the ice from forming on the props. There you go. Cool. You never knew that ice could form on a prop moving at, you know, 2,000 RPM. You ever? 2,500 RPM or however fast that one's going. Yeah, this is 2,500 at takeoff, and cruise 21 to 22 is typical. Yeah. Uh, surprisingly, though, one, people make the mistake of not turning the, the prop ice on early enough, and then it takes a long time, then it throws the ice off and hits the side of the airplane and oh. makes it dense. This side doesn't have it because of the way the prop turns. That's it true. throws it over. Oh. The other side, you'll see um, some dings and dents, not from me and that was from previous owner oh that may, yeah that makes sense and these are all the both of these engines rotate the same direction the same way so yeah. these are going this way yeah the piper version goes this way i call those outies because i know because i was like it's rotating out where every other rotates you know, this rotates way. in for the thrust line but those it's out and i guess the reason is because it stalls before it, Act, the VMC on it, right? Why they did, Steve Spear at Aerostar knows, because he was involved in that. And I have no idea the real reason that they, were, that they did that, but it had something to do with the handling and, the slow, and the, the slow speed handling on that particular airplane. There were changes that were made to this uh, because of slow speed handling. There's vortex generators on the vertical, 
They're underneath the horizontal stabilizer and um, underneath the wing down here. Oh yeah, so here we go. You got these little tabs right here called vortex generator. And so it takes the air as it sticks to this, it hits this and goes like this and separates a little bit better so it actually works better whenever you're flying really, really slow and when the wing is at an angle that's more like this instead of like this. That is super neat. Yep. Super neat. So a little bit, uh, we'll continue to walk around. The landing gear is fairly unique. And that is, it doesn't look unique, but it's tall. And Oh, wow, yeah, it is. Oh, because the wing is way up here. It's, yeah, because it's, it's, it's higher. You know, like the 414 is a low wing. And you look at the Cessna citations, and, they're, and you know, the gears doesn't seem like it's very far off the ground. But because of the length of this, um, Dad thought, man, I'm going to redesign the way, the way these work. And that's in one of the videos, and he talks about this a little bit. But he's got patents on this, so the, the, um, the cylinder that's inside of this that goes up and down, the, the actual shock absorber, is a different design than what normal stuff is. Interesting. And uh, so that was, that was something that he had designed and patented. The landing gear, um, the nose gear steering, that's all his design. The fuel system is all his design. Um, Along with the overall aesthetics of the airplane, and there is a story behind really, that. Really, the yeah. aesthetics. I thought Ted Smith would have been more on that. Well, there's a funny story about that. Dad got hired in December 1964. Here, let, let can we tell the story on this side? Okay. And change the December 1964, and then had some stuff he had to finish up with the company he was working working with, and then started in February of 1965. Wait till that thing goes away. That's a cool helicopter. Check that yeah. out. He was 500. Yeah. The Magnum PI helicopter. Yeah. That's it. We got these big seven. What did you say? 777. 70, 70, I think 80, those are triple seven X. They're um, big airplanes. Yeah. That's what they are. And they're waiting for engines. Yeah. At least that's what I understand. Um, okay. So anyway, Dad, he started work in February, and then Ted Smith, TR is what, how he was known to my dad, and his wife, Vernita, went on vacation. So Dad's there, brand new, sees Ted's drawings. And unfortunately, we can't find them. We think maybe the attorney who's still alive, uh, Bill Kalfa, still has them. I don't know. We can't find them, but they were ugly. And if you've ever seen the original Aero Commander, it's, yeah. it looks more like a potato than an it airplane. Does. And... So let me back up a second. So Ted Smith was one of the designers of the Aero Commander. That, I think that was his first one, and then he went to this, and then the West Wind. And so, so the, like, what was his progression? Where was this at in that the, line of his? So the Commander, uh, Ted Smith was working for Douglas Aircraft, and that's where they uh, designed. They were doing bomber designs, and he was he was on the team that did the design on the uh, was it the A A twenty six I think. I just looked at it, twin engine, mid-wing uh, attack bomber. Oh, okay. And while he was at Douglas, he and another guy came up with the idea to do the Aero Commander Company and designed the first Aero Commander while they were still at Douglas and then left Douglas and then formed Aero Commander. So the Aero Commanders were built. That was eventually sold to Rockwell. Mm -hmm. And I, while they were there, I think they went through all of the piston Piston Commanders, and I think Rockwell did the later on. I think Ted Smith was out of it, but the basic design was there. A lot of guys that are flying these that have a different mission end up moving up to the Aero Commander 1000s, which are 1,000 horsepower side turboprots. That's not a bad deal. That's not, yeah. When, and if you have a need for it, that's, that's the way to go. <laughs> Who doesn't have a need for 1,000 yeah. horsepower? So the story went, Ted and his wife go on vacation. Dad sees the drawings. He goes, that doesn't look very good. That's not going to sell. It redoes it. And I have that original drawing. And Ted Smith came back and said, I like this. Let's build a mock-up. And that's how and the, the nose has a lot to do with, with that. And more pointy. A lot or, more pointy. Yeah. And uh, it just looks. Yeah, it, it does. It, and his philosophy is that if it looks good, it's usually going to perform well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, there's not too many things that look really ugly that don't perform well. Got bumblebee. Yeah, 
Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that performed. That, the bumblebees look pretty cool. Yeah, they're pretty cool. But they, they look I mean, wings go like this, but they somehow magically still fly. Or a Mutu. Yeah, and that's, those are, they're pretty cool. They look a little funky, but they're pretty cool. They're pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so your dad helped uh, create, so he refined, maybe made things a little pointier, shaved, mm -hmm. you know, readjusted yeah. the original design of it. Yeah, you know, at that's, least that's easiest cool. thing to say is that he was involved in the design of the airplane early on, um, and was very instrumental in uh, how this thing uh, looks and flies. And that's right. And and I he is still very much alive, sharp as a tack. Yeah. Because you just did a series of interviews with him. There's a whole series of uh, yeah. Did five. Where you did five of them. And just talking about all of his history and his background, and he's got a crazy good story. Uh, I'll put the link to all those things down in the description. Go check them out. It's super cool stuff. Uh, to so yeah, check out. And what's your dad's name? Richard G. Reese. There you go. Junior. Junior. Yeah, and he goes by Dick. Okay. Dick Reese. There you go. Yeah, super great. He's what 94. 94. Well, he's been 94 in October. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. And still, just he was on it. The yeah, he's definitely on it. I talked to him last night, and he's just. <laughs> it blows me away how sharp he is. I mean, his, his math skills are better than mine are now, and I can, I'm getting kind of slow at it. Um, oh, man. So, you know, I walk, walk around, too. I'm just, you know, looking, looking for runs, drips, and errors, as I kind of call them. So things that don't look right. Um, I already checked the oil. So that's something that we do before every flight. And I generally check the condition of the wings, um, the boots, make sure these little these are called stall strips, these little Oh yeah, you got things. the little pointier things in the front of the, yeah. the wing here. This wing has, and this has to do with the direction the props are rotating, this wing has only one of them on this right here. The other one has four. And it all has to do with slow speed handling and when the wing stalls. Oh weird, I didn't know that. So yeah. you make sure both stall at the, the same? That's the idea, yep. Interesting, okay. okay. So the other mods that you can get are uh, blended winglets, stick up about this high extend the wing a little bit. Not a lot of performance improvement, but there's a cool factor. Yeah, there is. And the that's cool factor makes them look really cool. That's the whole reason I got that Lance Hare at the uh, Evergreen Museum. Because of the winglets? Because of the winglets. <laughs> I was like, so I don't cool. know if this will ever fly again, but it's got winglets on it. So yeah, I'm going to buy it. I don't. Very cool. I figured at worst case, I can maybe pull those wings off and stick them on my airplane because it's the same airplane. Yeah. If the rest of it, but turns out that airplane is really, really nice. And so I'm going to be selling my Lance Air to then fly that one. And this guy was doing aerobatics and all kinds of stuff in it. That, well, they're cool little airplanes. I mean, they're way ahead of their time in the design and, and everything. It's really cool. So, anyway, sorry. Um, I, I got all excited about winglets. Well, well, these are, and these wings, there's some interesting things. You guys know what a Learjet is. Mm -hmm. And. Mm -hmm. The Lear 23, the original one, this is the same airfoil family as the Lear 23. So it's a very high performance wing. And that's one of the things about the Aerostar that people say a lot. Well, don't get them slow, don't fly them. Well, they'll fly slow like any other airplane, but when they stall, they stall. I mean, yeah. it, just, it just shakes, rattles, and rolls, and it just falls out of the sky. It's flying, and then it's not. Yes. <laughs> and it warns you, there's no oral or horn or sound for the stall. It just, it just shakes. And if we can get to an area where we can go do some of that stuff, that no, might be No, I'm fun. good. No, I'll watch your videos for that one. Okay. Thanks. So, um, so what, what do we got back here? Uh, Exhaust pipes I see here. Yeah. So this has a heater. Oh, that's good. Cause today it's chilly. Yeah. It's a, well, you know, the engines are heaters too, because the heat that's coming off the turbochargers, some of that heat gets into the cabin. So that actually helps. Right, because the pressurization, and that's where, yeah, okay. Because when sense. you compress air, it heats up. Um, so this is, there's a furnace in here, and most twins have this. So you've got an intake for the combustion side and an exhaust. That's all that is. It's just in and out. And then this is actually uh, intake. Some of them have uh, little vents up here that are spring-loaded, but this just allows air to get back into the equipment bay where the air conditioner is. So it allows the cooler air to go in to where the um, uh, evaporator is, and it, it helps cool that down. That's crazy. So, My understanding, and help, help me clarify this, this was originally designed to be a jet. Yes. 
and they had to put the piston engines or the props on it in order for the FAA stuff. Is that correct, or is that no, kind of sort of? No, that's that's uh, you know, there's a lot of different stories out there, but they had a originally there was a whole progression of airplanes. So dad jokes about me being the first one to fly the Aerostar. It was a mock-up of the panel in the single engine format. So single engine. Single engine Aerostar. This was all designed to be to have a whole line of airplanes. So you had different horsepowers, a single engine version, which basically is the Malibu. Yeah. So the, the, you know Piper got it and go, oh we can do that. Um, then multiple twins. The first Aerostar flew with they were going to fly it with 160 horse engines, Ooh. and it flew with 180s, but the empty weight was a lot less. That's true. So, and roughly you know, what year was this? Uh, 60, 66, oh. I think was first flight, certified okay. in 67. So it's like 18 months from That's really quick. blank sheet of paper to certification, and that's, that's unheard of today. Yeah. Uh, I know I'm getting beyond the, the things for somebody new. Well, here's something about this. This is a cool airplane. There's nothing like it out there. And it's so much fun to fly. And if you have any, any aspirations of learning how to fly, well, hopefully this will give you some inspiration to go do it. Because these, are, these things are available. And it's, this is the ultimate video game. Because you're sitting in it. You get to fly it. And there's nothing else like that. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, very neat. All right, let's go. Let's finish our pre okay. Finish this, so we can, and uh, so we get going. Yeah. The um, one interesting fact: the the vertical fin, yeah, called the vertical stabilizer, and the horizontal stabilizer, which is each half. These things right here. Yeah. It's the same part. Seriously? Yeah, they're the same part. Huh. And that's pretty oh, that's crazy! Yeah, you can see the hinges right here. Yep, they're all. It, it's exactly the same part. And not only that, the the, the trim it just tab. Has this uh, piece on the front. That's here. that fiberglass the that made it look a lot better. When you see the first airplanes in some of the original videos, yeah, it just sticks up straight and it looks really small. And I think that was Dad who had him do that because it just made it look better. I mean, the symmetry between that. that okay, yeah. that's pretty cool. It looks like a real arrow with feathers. Yeah. And it's simplicity for parts manufacturing. Exactly. <laughs> and that was the, that was the uh, idea. Just give it. us three of those. Yep. <laughs> Done. And watch your eyes on the static wicks. These little, these little thingies sticking oh, out of yeah. here. These were, you know, like the things in the back of doors that when we were little kids, we'd go boiling, oh. boiling. I had a story about a black <laughs> lab that I had. We thought, before Silas was around, his name was Rocky, goofiest, best dog in the whole world. We thought it would be awesome if he learned how to tell us he needed to go outside. So we went over and told him that if he hit the little thing, and then he'd get to go outside. So it took us a couple of months, and sure enough, he learned how to do it. So, so funny. we'd come in from a walk, and then we'd take his leash off, put his thing down, sit down, and he'd go over and go, and then come back over and sit in front of us. And then go back over and we had to take all of those off of the entire house because he just kept hitting this stupid thing and we're like oh my god stop hitting him so what we thought was a cool little party trick turned out to be a really no nightmare bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> He's just going, I'm outside outside we're like oh. and you and i when we we're little we never did that we never hit those little things and made them like oh that. yeah yes. that's the best noise in the world no, i know the cartoon noise yeah. <laughs> Okay, so uh, this has a optional aux tank, carries an additional 44 gallons, bringing it up to uh, 209 and a half gallons of usable fuel, and you can put more in it as well if you want to.
Emergency belts are on and all that back yep. there? Yep. Okay. Everything is stowed. Nothing's going to flop around. Short field brakes. Flaps in. Full power. Confirm engines. And key here is to make sure it's rolling straight and then I apply the brakes. Okay, power, brakes are set. The checklist is complete down here. Turbos kick in at 25 inches. Rolling 42. T's and P's are all looking good. Brakes released. Okay, airspeed's alive. Engine instruments are in the green. Okay, Power 60 knots. 70 knots. Ready for takeoff. I have 80. 90. 95. Rotate. I'm going to hold 101 as I climb on out. Man, this thing will get with it, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Man, nice thing, you can see the mains. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> down. And you can see the nose gear and the spinner. Oh, that's right. All right, about 500 feet up, I'll go ahead and reduce the climb. 37 inches. from the right seat. Yeah. All right, there's 150 knots. That should give you over a thousand feet a minute. Seventeen thousand feet, and he's pulled the power back uh, in our ground speed right now. Where's, uh, we got? It's right there. It's two hundred fifty-one knots. Two hundred fifty-one knot ground speed, and what's our true air speed? We're going to do that here in a second. So that's the wrong button. We don't know if we have a uh, tailwind or yeah, we have. We do have a tailwind. Tailwind. Uh, we'll, we'll see what it is here in a second. It's three four zero set here, but everything's always a little bit off. Okay, gear stand and check. November eight seven Fox or Fox or Paint Car Roger stand by check left face. One hundred fifty. Skyhawk 73 Michael Tail, Payne Tower, uh, traffic off your, actually just regard, they're going westbound, no factor. Uh, inner left down, runway 16 left. Inner star 11111, left turn, Alpha 5, kind of ground point 8. Left at Alpha 5, ground 8, from 1. Session 243, Echo, Payne Tower, uh, make straight on runway 16 left. And there you go, just like that. That's what we call in, uh, you know, back in Florida, it will haul the mail. We gotta get one of these. 
That's what I'm saying. 